Getting to 100k net worth can feel like a slow crawl that's just a little bit out of reach. You're probably looking at 5 to 10 years of shoveling money into your savings and investment accounts, all while avoiding the temptation of what your friends, neighbors, and co-workers are doing. But hitting that 100k is a worthwhile goal. It's where compound interest really starts working in your favor. If you're like me and you don't want to sacrifice everything in your life just to hit that 100k, here are the biggest things that I quit buying to save to 100k without depriving myself too much. This first one is the biggest wealth killer in America with Gen Z spending a whopping 20% of their income on it every single month. If you buy this, you're going to lose thousands of dollars as soon as you buy it and strap yourself with debt for the next five years. And this one is buying a new car. I do understand that there's social pressure to always be driving the newest car, but the sooner you escape the mindset of keeping up with the Joneses, you can finally start building your snowball towards 100k. Cars also come with the laundry list of hidden costs. That expensive German vehicle you just bought, that comes with higher maintenance costs and higher insurance premiums over the next 10 years is going to eat away at your wealth faster than anything else. So to avoid the new car trap, look at buying used vehicles, driving a car until they break down, and if you're married, try to find a way to be a one car family instead of two. The second point is a ginormous purchase that you seriously need to think about before buying because it is expensive, it comes with a lot of costs down the road as well, and that is a house. Now a house, you may be thinking, is an ass set. But in reality, it is a huge liability. You get the house itself, but now you're paying huge interest rate on the house. If you ever look at an amortization graph, you'll realize that the first half of your mortgage to the first 15 years is you basically paying the bank money in interest. You're not really owning more of the house other than the down payment that you put in initially. But if your house is old, then there are so many additional costs, insurance, flood insurance, fire insurance, all your utilities, and there's things failing. This is probably the biggest cost when it comes to a house is things can fail. The AC unit can go out, your driveway could crack. There are so many points of failure and soon then you know it, you're looking at a 50k bill just staring at you in the face. So a house can be an asset, but you need to be very sure of what you're doing and think very long term. So one mistake that my husband and I made is that we bought this house thinking that, oh, we'll just sell it when we're ready to move. But when you seriously factor in the cost, there's cost of buying a house. There's even more costs when you sell one because you have to pay the realtor fees or your seller's agent and your buyer's agent. You've got to repair everything to make it sell in the first place. You've got taxes, you've got closing costs, title transfers, and title company. There's so many hidden costs associated to it. Do research. Do a lot of research beforehand. It's such a bigger decision than you might think it is. Item number three, you can actually get for really cheap, but when you buy it new, it is expensive as heck, and that is furniture. Furniture in your house, like this couch, dining table, they instantly lose value as soon as you sit on it or use it. Rather than buying things new from the furniture store, you can look on the Facebook marketplace because things go for so cheap. If you buy something for cheap and then hire professional cleaners to get it clean, then you're basically looking at a, like a refurbished piece of furniture that you can include in your house without breaking the bank. When we went to the furniture store, when we first bought the house, we were just perusing around, looking around. There was a sectional there and it was a whopping $4,000. When you look on Facebook Marketplace, you can get a sectional for like 500 bucks. That is a huge 10x difference. So save yourself some money, get 200k net worth easier by just buying used furniture. You're not depriving yourself. You have the exact same furniture as everyone else. It just doesn't come with that exorbitant price tag. The fourth thing that I stopped buying has helped my health as well as helped my wallet. I've been able to save so much money per month while also looking better, feeling better. My family is healthier now than ever before. And that was to quit eating ultra processed food in the form of eating out. So eating out, you have a lot of 
of not healthy options, especially food delivery can add up very fast. If you do want to go eat out, like go for it, celebrate, do something nice for yourself, but don't get that food delivery. Just go pick it up and you'll probably save $15 just by doing that and put that $15 straight into your investment account or high yield savings or whatever it is. From what we've learned from meal prepping all of our weekly meals, we could meal prep for two people all of our meals for about $150 a week by shopping at places like Aldi, HEB. I can save a lot of money there. Whereas eating out, it would cost $40 each time. That adds up so quickly. The fifth thing that I stopped buying or is buying less to reach 100K net worth actually ended up saving me a lot of mental space as well as closet space. And that is to not buy as much clothing. When we buy too much clothing, it really adds up in the closet. And now our closet is cluttered and our mind is cluttered. And every morning we go there and we're like, what do I wear today? And the thing that you said yes to is the same thing that you always pick out anyways. Just stick to the basics of what you always wear. And that way your closet is like 90% your favorites rather than 10% favorites. So buying clothes can be expensive, but rather than looking at the price tag of the piece of clothing itself, I prefer to look at the cost per wear. So if I'm wearing a white shirt for easy math, let's say it costs like $50, which is a really expensive white shirt. If I wear it one time, that's $50. If I wear it twice, 25. If I wear it a hundred times, I need a calculator, 50 cents per wear. So the more you wear a piece of clothing, the less money you end up spending on it in the long run. So it's okay to buy expensive clothes if you wear it many times. The sixth item that I stopped buying to get to 100K net worth actually made me feel a lot better about my personal appearance and made me more confident about what I look like naturally. Sixth thing is makeup. Makeup can be so expensive. It's a consumer which means when you run out, you need to go and buy more. That means you're constantly re-upping on this thing that could be costing you hundreds of dollars per month. But rather than paying hundreds of dollars per month, you can just save that right into an investment account. Not only do I save a lot of money, but I just love that I feel good in my own skin. But that doesn't mean you don't take care of your skin. <laughs> the next item, number seven, I stopped buying to get to 100K net worth, and that is skincare products. Now we all know that if you go to a store like Ulta, there are aisles and aisles and aisles of skincare products. Things ranging from like $10 all the way to a couple hundred. Some people really like to indulge in skincare. I, I enjoy skincare, but because I found products that really fit my routine without going overboard and not going too crazy, I mean, I mean you only need a few basics. You need your moisturizer, your face wash, your sunscreen toner, and maybe a couple of extras like acne serum. You have to go too crazy to stick to a simple skincare routine. I've been using the same stuff for about a decade now and it's not too expensive. I don't feel like I'm wasting money on taking care of my skin. You can go from a skincare routine that costs hundreds of dollars to something that costs maybe $50 every other month. You're not sacrificing anything. You're not depriving your life. You're still taking care of your skin and you still feel good about yourself. Next one, enough about makeup, skincare, and clothes. We're going to go into the big boy items that are a little bit more expensive that don't necessarily add value into your life and that is home renovations. When you have a house, you feel inclined to upgrade it because that's what homeowners tell you to do. Buy a house, you upgrade it, the value goes up, right? No, not necessarily. So when homeowners want to buy a home, if you're selling, there are things that do add value and there are things that don't. Unfortunately for us, we invested in things that don't necessarily increase its value. And the downside of increasing your home value is that you pay more taxes. So do you ever win, win, win here? Or maybe you just lose all the time. It can be very expensive. You could be looking at 30,000 for windows, 20,000 for a roof, another four or five for gutters. I mean, things start adding up quick, really, really quick. So instead of neglecting your home and not repairing it at all, the best thing to do is actually just to repair what's needed, do things that might actually improve the home value, maintain the home, repair the stuff, but not go extra and bougie to get the extra things like the new windows and the new fence, unless it's broken. The ninth thing that I've quit to raise my net worth actually has also saved me a ton of time throughout the day, as well as saved me money, and that is streaming subscriptions, things like HBO, Netflix, 
Netflix, pretty much anything that involves you watching something through a streaming service, cancel them all and use just one at a time. If you're owning like 10 subscription services at $15 a month, that's $150 a month. Whereas if you just have one, watch a show on there, you cancel it. Next month, you jump to another one, you watch them shows on there. There's a lot of benefits to this. More than just money saving, you're limiting your content consumption, which means that you have more time in your day to do what truly matters to you rather than just consuming binge watching. It's okay to watch intentionally to wind down, less okay to binge watch without your control. And another benefit is that while you're watching things on one platform, you may be waiting for your show to get a new season on another platform and that way you can come back and that show is waiting right there for you. So there's more benefits than money savings, but money savings are really cool too. And if you've been off a platform long enough, they'll give you that one month free trial again. All right, the next thing I stopped buying, it's the biggest struggle that I have because I could so easily make a case to buy it over and over and over again, but there are so many ways to get it for free that I now only buy it if I have to, and that is books. I love books. I love reading. We really try to limit the amount of books that we physically buy because now we go to the library. We use Libby. If you don't know Libby, Libby is an app that allows you to access your library's audiobooks and ebooks and just send it straight to your Kindle app. You can buy used as well. There are so many ways to save money with books. You're also saving the environment by not buying new books. We buy used nowadays if we have to, and it's so much cheaper than buying new. So you save yourself money by doing all those things. Library, Libby, buy used, and then if none of those options are there, then consider buying the book. The next thing is going to help your health as well as help your wallet, and that is just quitting junk food and not buying junk food. I know it's a really hard thing to think about because when I was younger, I actually ate a lot more junk food than I do now. It's a lot easier to make a case for quitting junk food when you're older, but junk food is so ultra processed and it affects your body in more ways than you would think it, it does. It's not just extra calories. It's not just empty calories. I mean, no one thinks junk food is good for you. So easy to just stop buying it. That's one hack that we do is that if we don't buy it, we're not going to eat it. And if you don't buy it, you save a bunch of money. So eat whole foods. It may look like it's more expensive, but you actually get a ton more meals out of it and a lot more satiety and micronutrients. So your body feels better as well. The next item, number 12, is something that's going to be really hard to quit. But if you can quit it, it's worthwhile for your wallet, your health, your mental health, posture, everything. That is quit driving more than you would need to. So basically, you're saving money in the form of gas, car repairs, and you save the environment. Big thing that you can change is just to either move closer to your work or find an alternative form of commute to work. When we lived in Washington, one thing that we did instead of driving is that we would just bike to work instead. We would get exercise. So that was really great. It was great for our cardiovascular health, but also getting that daily sunshine every morning, which is amazing. And it saved a bunch of money. If you can't do that, maybe try working remotely instead. I know a lot of companies nowadays are much more open to remote work than they used to be. There's so many hidden costs of driving a lot, constantly in a sitting position. So hips are constantly in a flexion, which means it's stuck in this position. But then to stand up straight, your back has to compensate for it. And it's going to cause a back pain and driving causes more stress because you're stuck in traffic, worried if you're going to be late or not. And the last thing is something very extra that most people might not buy. But if you do buy this a lot, thinking that it would help your health, try another option. And that is expensive supplements. I know nowadays people think that they can have a lot of supplements in replacement of high micronutrient dense food, but supplements can add up really quickly. There are reasons to take supplements. If your doctor says that you're deficient in something, then it makes sense to supplement in addition to eating whole foods. If you do take them, the 80-20 of supplements, in my opinion, from the books that I've read, are a multivitamin, just as insurance, creatine, because it helps with muscle synthesis and workouts, and omega-3 for heart health. And that's pretty much it. A long time ago, I got a blood test and I was deficient in vitamin D. So the doctor just said, hey, like either go out and get more sun 
or go and take this vitamin D supplement. Figured it would be easier to get more sun, get more exercise, be outside. So there's a lot of simple solutions that isn't just to take more stuff and put it in your body. And those are the 13 things that I've quit buying or buy less of to reach 100k net worth. If you're interested in five habits that are going to help you increase your net worth, check out this video here.